to fulfill the law and the prophets to a virgin in the world from a throne of endless glory to a grave You know what, church? Oh, praise the Father. Praise us. Yeah, yeah. Praise us, Spirit. Three in one. Oh, God of glory. Majesty. Praise forever to the Oh, 
You know, I love when in worship, it's almost like you can see Jesus. With the eyes of your heart just open to glimpse him and love him and to fall in love with him all over again. How many of you feel that this morning? Lord, we thank you for your presence. Come on, would you just thank him? Lord, we thank you for being near to us. Lord, for pouring out your love and your spirit upon us over and over again. Lord, may we never grow cold to it. May we never become lethargic or complacent about it. But may we always treasure the awareness of your presence in our midst. In Jesus' name. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen. Would you just give two or three people a hug this morning and welcome them to Nation's Church? It's so good to see you, all of you. What an amazing time of worship we've had together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wow. How many of you are happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? I know, I know that sometimes becomes a cliche in the church world, but I tell you what, I really am happy to be worshiping with you and to see all your smiling faces. You know, one of the wonderful things about nations that, that I often explain to people when they ask about what's happening here is that it's kind of like a modern day Antioch to me in a way, because there's, it's not just a, a local group of people, although that is part of it, but we also have a family of ministers and evangelists and missionaries that are always coming back from the field and getting refreshed and then going back out to the field. Um, I, I actually noticed several of our team members that, actually a bunch of you that have been out on the field that are back this week and just visiting with us and you'll probably head out again. Um, I saw Yako and Karin here. By the way, would you guys just stand? I want to make sure everyone knows who you are. Come on, will you guys put your hands together for Yako and Karen? If you don't know them, let me put it like this. If you don't love them, you don't know them. Because they are so amazing. You know, Yako used to be one of the uh, truck drivers for the Crusades, and he would be driving these trucks from you know, city to city, nation to nation across Africa. They would have all the sound equipment and the platform and everything in them. And also, in addition to the truck driving, he and Karin had a ministry in East Africa where they would go preach the gospel in schools all over the place. And so, you know, we were starting some of these initiatives with boot camp graduates and, and some of our teams going into schools. And back then, we were able to get into like two schools a week. That was about our... about. The, the best that we could do. And then one day, Yako was um, sitting there at the crusade field. He'd just been driving the truck. I forget what nation this was in, but they had gotten stuck at the border for a couple days. And so he told me the story. He said, well, I, I told Winnie, you know, who's in charge of that whole department. He said, do you mind if I go preach in some schools? And Winnie said, sure, go for it. And so I said, did you get into any schools? He said, yeah, I, I, I preached in six schools that day. I said, wait a minute, six schools? And, and, and I began to hear the stories about how God was using him and the gift that's on him and Karen's life to reach these schools. I said, here's what I need you to do. I need you to stop driving these trucks. I need you to come to Orlando and teach thousands of people to do what you do. And that's why they're here. They are pouring out of their lives and their gift in, into others. That's partly what the boot camp is about. By the way, how many boot camp students do we have that are part of this most recent class? Would you guys just stand to your feet? We want to... We want to put our hands together for you and welcome you to the nation's church family. These guys are going to be tearing up Orlando, turning up Orlando upside down for the next few weeks. And then they're going to be sent off to, I believe you guys are going to Uganda, right? And in Uganda, we've already got a team there on the ground. I think they've got over 4,000 pastors and churches that are working to, together for the crusades that are going to happen um, in, what is it? April, May, June, July, something like that. But we're going to see hundreds of thousands of people saved there. And um, by the way, speaking of people coming back from the, uh, the field, I want to just recognize Paul Goebel. Paul, will you stand? Come on, you guys know Paul. He is another truck driver. And um, 
I, I hope I'm not embarrassing you, but he almost died. I can say it now that you're good, okay? I wouldn't have said it to you when you were in the hospital, but um, he, he actually got malaria and all kinds of stuff on the last trip uh, and was in the hospital, but the Lord had mercy on him, and I'm so glad to see you back here with us, Paul. We love you. And Tiffany, thank you for taking such good care of him. And um, anyway, I could, I could go on and on because there's so many uh, of you that I just love. But thank you for being a part of this family. Thank you for supporting those of you that are sending us to the field. Thank you for doing that. And along those lines, can I just encourage you all to be faithful in your giving? Can we go ahead and put the information up on the screen? How many cheerful givers are there in the house this morning? You know, there are a lot of good things that you can support and a lot of good things that you can give to, but I'm telling you, when you faithfully give your tithes and offerings here at Nations Church, you are really helping to stoke the fire of a movement that is touching the world. I am an eyewitness of what is happening, not just in this room, not just on the other side of town at Oak Ridge, not just in the boot camp, not just in Nations College, not just in the School of Evangelism, not just in the fire camps, not just in the 14 offices, in 12 countries on six continents, but around the world as hundreds of thousands of people are coming to Christ. I don't want to steal any of his thunder. McCoby's going to come out soon and, and tell you about some of this stuff. But do you realize we've had a goal this year in our 50th anniversary of Christ for All Nations to see, one, to see 10 million people come to Christ this year? Just this year, 10 million people. And as of a few days ago, we surpassed already this year the first million people that have come to Christ. Come on. And you know, as amazing as it is what's happening in this room, this is only the tip of the iceberg. The real work is being done all over the globe right now, even as we speak. And in fact, you know, we just got back from Nigeria, where if you've been following, you know, the last time you saw me was on the screen. I was coming to you from the field there where we did four back-to-back -back mass gospel crusades. Uh, that's like 18 nights of massive meetings there in, in Abia State in Nigeria. And then on the back end of that, which you probably don't realize, is that because of all the work that was done to set up those crusades, the advertising, the publicity, the gathering together of the different churches and pastors and all of the infrastructure that was put in place and the momentum that was built preparing for this thing, we decided to have some of our boot camp graduates come in on the back end of that crusade, take the equipment that's there, take the advertising, use the momentum, use the connections with the pastors and do a whole nother wave of crusades. So right now, as we're sitting here now, there are three other crusades happening in Abia State in Nigeria right now. So we're doing 50 crusades this year. Tonight marks the end of the first seven of those crusades already. And how many of you would say we're off to a good start? And I think we're gonna surpass that number of 10 million and leave it in the dust. But the amazing thing is that that will mean that, that by the end of the 50th anniversary of Christ for All Nations, we will have seen since the beginning 100 million documented decisions for Christ around the world. And as amazing as that is, to me, that's just the firing pistol, the starting pistol. The best is yet to come in Jesus' name. So with that information up in the screen, if you need an envelope, just raise your hand. The ushers will come around and give you one. Anybody who needs an envelope, lift your hands. Okay, let me just pray for you. If you're giving by way of a check and it's in an envelope or cash, just lift the envelope. If you're giving online, raise your phone. If you're giving some other way, just raise your hand. I just wanna pray a very special prayer blessing over all of us who are giving this morning. Father, we thank you that your word says that you are our source, you are our provide to, provider. And Lord, we give back to you out of your own hand. So Lord, I pray this morning as we give that you would take every gift that's given, would you multiply it and invest it back into these lives, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Lord, we thank you for provision. We thank you for blessing. We thank you for oversupplying our needs in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. Now I'm gonna have, um, someone come in just a moment, but I'm gonna give you a couple quick announcements while the offering is being collected. Nation's College Days is coming up on March 20th and 21st. If you wanna find out what Nation's College is like, if you'd like to get a little, um, little taste of that, make sure that you sign up. By the way, this QR code will take you to all the different uh, things that I'm going to mention right now. And so um, Nation's College College Days, also the, the, our next men's pancake breakfast is coming up. 
I don't know what it is about men and pancakes, but it seems to draw the men. Okay, praise God. Um, then how many of you realize Palm Sunday is already next Sunday? Can you believe that this has happened so quickly? When you came in, you might have gotten one of these little cards that I'm holding in my hand. If you didn't, you can grab them on your way out at the door. But this is a, a little card that tells about all the activities coming up for Holy Week. Next Sunday, again, the 24th is Palm Sunday. Then Good Friday is the 29th. And then the following Sunday is Easter Sunday. And we have an amazing Easter Sunday service coming. One of the reasons for these cards is not only so that you can be informed, but I would encourage you to take some of these, invite your friends, invite lost loved ones, because around here, this is an evangelistic environment. We don't just celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. We demonstrate it, and we're going to see people come to Christ on Easter Sunday, so make sure that you invite people, and uh, we're going to have an amazing time together. And then um, I want to, before McCoby comes and tells us about all of the Salvations. How many of you are excited to hear what God has done this week? It's, a, it's an amazing one. Wait until you hear this. But I want to introduce you to um, an amazing man who's part of our nation's leadership team. His name is Jim Whitley. Uh, again, Jim is one of those guys. To know him is to love him. He leads the prophetic ministry here at Nations Church. And it's good to kind of mention these things because sometimes, you know, people have come more recently and may not be aware of all of the stuff that's going on. Do you realize that in between services every Sunday morning, we have prophetic ministry happening right here on site where you can go and sit with a team and they will minister to you and they will, they will speak the word of the Lord over your life. It is revolutionary. It's, tr it's like transformational. I would be uh, hesitant to sign off on this if it wasn't for the fact that there is a man at the helm who is a solid, trusted man who knows the word of God and hears the voice of God and I, I trust him with my life. And I know that you guys are gonna be so blessed by him. So would you just put your, Jim Whitley as he comes. So I just wanna say up front, I'm so grateful to be able to teach the prophetic to the body and equip the body in this congregation. I'm so grateful to Pastor Daniel, Pastor Russ for that. You know, I've been able to, to participate in teaching and training the prophetic for 25 years. And uh, not too many years ago, we moved to Florida. I thought maybe I'd go into retirement, go fishing all the time. But I felt the Holy Spirit say, I want you to help equip evangelists with a prophetic gift. And then I heard about this man named Daniel Kalenda and CFAN and all that stuff. And so I'm grateful to be here, very grateful to be here. The prophetic gift, according to Paul, is to encourage, comfort, and help other people. It's not a gift for ourselves, it's a gift to give away. It's an equipping and a powering. He said in 1 Corinthians 14, 1, Paul did, to pursue love for the, as the highest goal, but to earnestly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy, because prophecy encourages, comforts, and helps other people. That's for all of us. It's a ministry of the Holy Spirit through us to help other people without knowing anything about a person, you can hear from the Lord for them and bless them in powerful ways. And that happens every Sunday here with trained people. We have teams that go out to other, uh, other churches at times. We're going to Brazil this year, amen, with, with Fire Conference. So <clears throat> one, of the, one of the guys that works on our teams here is Logan Dorn. And he went and uh, taught on the prophetic gift at a local church in Naples recently. And I want to, he's going to tell you one example of something that happened on that trip that is amazing. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Jim. Um, so we were on an outreach, and before the outreach, we were praying. And a lady specifically saw a specific witchcraft necklace in, in her mind's eye, in, in a vision, in a picture. And so we go on our outreach, we're in Target, and I just feel the leading of the Lord. Some lady walks in the door, and as she walks in the door, I just feel the Father's heart for her. And so we go, we go and minister to her. And the Lord just start, get, starts pouring out prophetic words, words of knowledge, a crystal clear gospel is preached to her. And she ends up giving her life to Jesus on the spot in Target. And as we look down right there is the specific witchcraft necklace that we saw beforehand. And that's not at the end. Then, then we invite her to take the, the necklace off and break it, but she, she wouldn't break it unfortunately, but she took it off and then she, um, she, she basically, you know, she declared that Jesus is Lord and then we invited her 
to a young adults meeting that night and she got baptized in the Holy Spirit. So praise God, hallelujah. Do you want to learn to minister in the prophetic gift? So we are doing a class tomorrow night. There's a QR code that's going to show up on the screen, hopefully, and you'll be able to register for that. It was up there earlier. There it is. So if you go to that, scroll down, you'll find the prophetic training class. It's tomorrow night. I only do it twice a year. So come on out and hope to see you there. Bless you guys. Good morning, Jesus, sir. You guys excited to be in the house of God this morning? Man, I've got some exciting, uh, I've got, have an exciting four minutes for you. I want to tell you guys a story. You might have heard this story, but we were at the Ogbor Hill Crusade. As you heard Evangelist Kalenda say, we did four crusades in Abia State, and there's three more happening right now as we speak. The final nights are just kind of wrapping up. And I have those numbers I'm going to share with you in a moment. You heard Daniel say we've already passed one million documented decisions for Christ in 2024. On the third night, actually he came on the first night, but I didn't know he was there. But on the third night, there was a little boy named Richard, and his dad was holding these crutches in his hand. And little, little Richard walked onto the stage, and he, he was just kind of a shy little boy, but he walked there and he stood right there. And as I asked him, you know, what God did for him, because I didn't know what was going on, I didn't know if he had broken his foot, broken his leg, or what happened. He said, I was, I was actually, I went to the doctor, and his dad was helping him, but he said, I went to the doctor, and they actually said that I was going to die. I was skin and bones. I have, I have pictures, like gruesome, brutal to look at pictures, showing this little boy literally just skin and bones. It looks like literally he's about to die, just, just death all over him. He said, I haven't walked right in my entire life. My bones are messed up. He has some, some disease that the doctors don't know what it is, and it's incurable. They, don't even, they can't diagnose it, and they can't cure it. And so he came up on the stage, and I said, what did the Lord do for you tonight, Richard? And he said, he healed me. And he said, I've never walked in my entire life. And he said, I said, Richard, I want you to do something that you haven't done before. And he started jumping like this, jumping up and down. And when he does that, his dad literally bends over and starts weeping because he's never seen his little boy do that. Isn't that beautiful? I asked Richard, I said, do you know who has healed you? And the first time it was very just weak voice, you know, Jesus. And then I asked again, what's his name, Richard? And you'll see it on a video in just a moment. And he says, Jesus. And a third time, what's his name, Richard? And he goes, Jesus. And literally the entire crusade, all those people who knew that this boy has never walked before and see him walking, see him jumping and dancing, and they all went just absolutely wild. It was a, a beautiful moment. But I want to tell you a story now that you definitely have not heard. Are you ready for that? Or do you want me to hold these? Hold sure. Yes, thank you, Makobi. Yeah, so I had the honor and privilege of being in Nigeria, and I also had the privilege of bringing home Richard's crutches after Jesus healed him. And during my layover in New York City, within 30 minutes of getting off the plane, a man limped by on crutches, and I said, Sir, do you know what's in this box right now? A boy in Nigeria just got healed by Jesus, and he wants to do the same thing for you. And so I prayed for him. And as we began to walk and test out his foot, his eyes got big and he handed me his crutch and he began to walk with no crutches. And then he gave his life to Jesus. God is so good, amen. Amen, so from Abia State to New York City, right now to Orlando, Jesus is the healer, amen. Really quick, Gabe, I want you to come up here for a second. And Guy, come up here very quickly. Listen guys, this is off script and I'll probably get in trouble, but you guys gotta hear this, okay? So we told this story, the first service, and I just heard this from Guy. Guy, why don't you tell the story and interview Gabe? So as Makobi was telling the story about the little boy in Nigeria that got healed from not being able to walk, we were back there after the 9 a.m. service and Gabe said, man, I can't move my neck that well. My neck's really hurting, so me, Jared, and Nick, the guitar player, we laid our hands in him and we just declared healing over his life and I kind of forgot about it. And then as soon as we were done with worship, I looked at him just now and said, hey bro, how's your neck? He's like, healed. <laughs> I'm like, what? So he's like, yeah, it's healed, it's gone. I'm like, let's praise the Lord. So you couldn't move your neck at all? No, I actually couldn't. And it was kind of hard, you know, me playing drums, I like to move a lot. So in first service, I was kind of struggling a little bit. And then second, you know, 
we went in and I was like having the time of my life and I was like, wow, Jesus, my neck doesn't hurt anymore. And then, yeah. So no more pain. Is there no more pain? No, not at all. Come on, let's give Jesus a mighty shout of praise. All right, I have a very special gift for you as if that wasn't enough. We have all the crusade numbers except for the ones that are literally happening right now. So, so far in Abia State, Nigeria, we have seen just in the past few months, 392,885 documented decisions for Christ. And God has changed that area. And for generations, there's gonna be believers and Holy Spirit filled Christians leading people to Christ. And even just in the past seven days, one person in Canada gave their life to Christ. Two in Guinea-Bissau, three in Qatar, seven in Mexico, eight in Honduras, 30 in Germany, 30 in Singapore, 50 in Argentina, 113 in Australia, 144 in the United States, 540 in Lesotho, 610 in Venezuela, 5,772 in South Africa, 9,920 in Sierra Leone, 130,356 in Nigeria, and 175,055 in the Kenya. For a grand total in the past seven days, Nations Church, give it up, 322,641 documented decisions for Christ. Let's lift up a mighty shout of praise to the Lord of the Harvest. of Jesus. His hand will sweep under you. He will catch you where you fall and he will lift you up out of sin. He will lift you up out of darkness. He will lift you out of addiction. He will lift you out of adultery. He will lift you out of idolatry. He will lift you out of chains. He will lift you out of hell and he will lift you higher and higher all the way to heaven. If you believe it, shout amen. He healed you. What did he heal you from? Your eye. Can we test your eye to make sure that Jesus has healed you? How many fingers am I holding up? Two. Hallelujah. All glory to Jesus. It was so painful. I couldn't open my mouth. Even to smile, I was just smiling one-sided, but now I can smile. Oh, isn't Jesus wonderful? You're going to meet Jesus. He's going to change you. He's going to wash you. He's going to cleanse you. Because from this night forward, your body will become a temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! He healed me. He was in a coma and having seizures. And he could not walk or jump. But we prayed in the name of Jesus! Do you know who has healed you, Richard? Jesus. What's his name, Richard? Jesus! He doesn't come here to be part of your life. Oh no, he comes to be the Lord of your life. When we finished praying, I jumped and my leg was ever, my leg was no more stiff and I could run again. Hallelujah, King, let's run it. Jesus died upon that cross to save you from sin, to save you from death, to save you from addiction, to save you from darkness, to save you from bondage. And when you call upon his name, Jesus Christ will set you free. When you go home tonight, you will be a shining light for Jesus. I had a breast pain, so now I can't. <laughs> I, I can't even jump. Maybe just dance. Come on, show us what you can do now. No pain. No pain. Hallelujah! I bless you in the name of Jesus. If you receive it, shout a mighty amen.
I tell you, whenever I hear Richard say, Jesus, it gets really dusty in here. All of a sudden, my eyes start watering. What a, what a joy, what a joy to bring Jesus into people's lives, amen? And so uh, this morning, without any further ado, I want to introduce our guest speaker, and he's one of, the guy, one of these guys that I could just talk about so long he wouldn't have time to preach. I don't want to do that, but his name is Matthias van der Steen. He is a man that has been a friend of mine for many, many years. In the Netherlands, I would consider his ministry there to have been one of the greatest ministries that I know of. A, a great church, one of the greatest churches in that part of the world, an evangelistic ministry that reaches all over, especially in Asia. I can't tell you some of the things he's done because we're on line right now, but going into closed nations, being able to win people to Jesus in places that you would think are absolutely impossible. He's a mighty man of faith, and now he actually lives right here in Florida, and he's not a guest, he's part of the family. So would you welcome, as though he is your brother, right here in Orlando, Florida tonight, Matthias Van Der Steen as he comes. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's, let's stand up on our feet again. Come on, church. I mean, are you aware what the Lord is doing through this church? You had to see evangelist Daniel Kalendas, his face when he saw again the video and, and hearing from uh, McCoby all the, the numbers what the Lord has done just in this week. I don't know any ministry, any church who can say on a Sunday morning, by the way, last week in seven days, we saw over the 300,000 people receiving Jesus Christ. I mean, this is huge, amen? So let's just lift up our hands and shall we just give glory to Jesus with the biggest shout, come on church. Nations Church, don't take it for granted. Thank you, Lord. Let's thank the Lord of the harvest. Come on, church, you can do way better than this. Come on. Lord, we give you all the glory. And we thank you, Lord, for this double harvest. We thank you, Lord. You are the Lord of the harvest. And thank you, Lord. We are seeing in front of our eyes Psalm 2 coming to the fulfillment where we pray together, Lord, give us the nations. And thank you, Lord, you gave the nations in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen. Are you happy? Yeah. Amen. You can be seated. And I want to welcome everyone who's watching online from all over the world. It's such a big privilege to be here with uh, the, the Nations Church family. And uh, I'm here with my whole family as well. My wife is here and the kids. Um, we have uh, four children, Sephaniah, 18, and then a 15, and a 13. And then we have Chloe. She is... 10 months and I, I'm almost 50 next year so uh, I want to encourage everyone you know uh, if you're around 48 and you want to you know keep young then uh, yeah talk to your to your wife and <laughs> amen well because we already mentioned uh, what what the Lord you know is is doing all around the world and uh, I really want to talk with you about a theme that has been on my heart um, for the last uh, months and uh, I, I really believe that the Lord this morning uh, want to show his healing power So who is who is sick this morning? You feel like there's something wrong in your body you have pain right now Maybe you can you can wave your hand also at home. I don't see you but just do it in faith Yeah, I really believe that Jesus is here and he's going to heal you That many people will walk out of this room healed set free and delivered. Amen so prepare your heart, expect your miracle. Even right now, I know people are getting healed. You, you're, you're feeling actually the pain is, is leaving. There, there's like an anointing from the Holy Spirit here in this place. The theme of this morning and this preaching is do something what you have never done before. Talk to your neighbor and say, do something what you have never done before. Yep. And maybe say and declare with me, I'm going to do something what I've never done before. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence, for your glory, for your power. And thank you, Holy Spirit, that the word is still active in the life. We thank you for everything you're going to do right now through your word in Jesus' mighty name. This morning, I want to talk about active faith. Say with me, active faith. I want to read with you Matthew 26, verse 40 and Verse 41, I'm going to read up from the message translation from this scripture. And it says, when Jesus came back to his disciples, remember 
He was about to suffer and die on the cross. And at that moment, in his tight spot, he needed his friends to be with him and pray. But he found them sound asleep. And he said to Peter, listen, Jesus said this to Peter, not just to a random person. He said this to one of his closest disciples. He said to Peter, Peter, can you stick out with me a single hour? Stay alert. Be in prayer. I do believe this is the prophetic sound from heaven. In the season we are living in to the body of Christ all over the world. Stay alert. Be awake. Stay in prayer. Spend time with Him. He wants to spend more time with you than you with Him. He is waiting for you. He wants to tell you things. He wants to spend time with his sons and daughters. Did you know we are not employees? We are not franchising the kingdom of God. He is looking for sons and daughters who are willing to spend time with him. That's a side note. Can't you stick an hour with me to pray? Stay alert, be in prayer, so you don't wander into temptation without even knowing you are in danger. And then Jesus said to Peter, listen, this blow my mind. Again, sometimes I have to translate my Dutch into English, okay? Stay with me. <laughs> there is a part of you, a part of you that is eager on Sunday morning, on the boot camp, in a conference, on a fire night, ready for anything in God. But on Monday morning, On Monday morning, there's another part that is as lazy. I mean, this is Jesus saying. There's another part that's as lazy as an old dog sleeping by the fire. With other words, Jesus is saying this. On the moment you follow Jesus, that same spirit of faith, what has been in Jesus, that same spirit of faith is operating in your life. Did you know that? Oh man, I wish I can have more time to teach on that. The spirit of faith can move mountains. The spirit of faith can make a way where there seems to be no way. The spirit of faith has all to do with trusting in Him. Not knowing where you're going. And the Bible says, Jesus says to Peter, listen Peter, there's a part of you what is eager to do anything for God. Send me Lord, here I am. But then Monday morning comes. Or Tuesday comes, there are things in your life that I would call, it's still your faith, but that faith is sleeping. That faith is lazy. That faith is not willing to pray. That part of you, what is damaged because you walked in faith and you went through things and the opposite happened in your life. Everyone here went through disconnections, disappointments, and I believe 100% from the Lord that He's going to restore everything what has been destroyed, damaged in your faith life. I'm serious about this. He's going to bring everything what has been damaged in your faith into a brand new place of transformation and reformation, says the Lord. He is here. He is here. He is here. And in the glory and in the presence, in His presence, everything can happen. The Bible says in Hebrews 6 verse 12 from the NIV, we do not want you to become lazy, sleepy. But we want you to imitate those who through faith, say with me, through faith, faith. and patience, faith. inherit what has been promised. Do you know that beside the door of your impossible situation, there's a promise. There is an inheritance. There is something what the Lord wants to do this morning, what has to do with your faith, what will open the doors. Because some of you, you are too long in the waiting room. The past is gone, the new is there, but you feel like stuck. 
One day I was walking with my, one of my best spiritually friends, uh, uh, Jean-Luc Trassel. He is an incredible man of God. He lives in Europe. And uh, when I was living in Europe, I would go with him, you know, to Switzerland. He lives in, in, in the Swiss Alps. He knows how to walk. I don't know how to walk. I know how to bike. I'm a real Dutch guy. We are professionals in biking. <laughs> He's a professional in, in walking mountain. And so one day he took me to a high mountain and I had the wrong shoes on. And everything in me wanted to reach the top. But there was another part what was feeling my feet and my, my, it was hurting. Like what you said in English, bladders, bladders, like a thing, not bladders, bladders is here. Like what you say that like, blisters, blisters. blisters. hallelujah, pa. The blisters and the blizzards. <laughs> and so I had these blisters on my feet and everything, it was swollen and it was hurting, walking for hours and everything in me wanted to go down. Everything wanted to go on the top, but, but there were some parts in me that wanted to go down. So I feel like stuck. Do you know that many times in the body of Christ, they look like this? We see the promise. We smell revival. We see the change. But there are parts in us. We don't want to give. We don't want to fast. We don't want to pray. We don't want to read the word. It needs to be quick. Well, there's no quick. Life is a process. So we are stuck. And the Lord wants to release right now this feet who wants to go down. So both feet can go up. So we all go on to see the promises of God in your life being fulfilled. Because you are territory takers. Say with me, I am a territory taker. Oh, Rabbi, you can do very better. Now say it with faith. I am a territory taker. Amen. And today I want to talk with you about a group of people who were territory takers. A group of people in the New Testament who were not guys from sleeping faith, but active faith. And this is how it looks like. And you will be blessed through this short message. Amen? Amen. So Luke 5 verse 17 to 26. Also from, from everyone watching at home, I'm going to read from the NLT. One day, say with me one day. It could be just a Sunday, just one day. While Jesus was teaching, some Pharisees and teachers or religious law were sitting nearby. On the moment you preach Jesus, on the moment you see manifestations of his kingdom, there will be always teachers and Pharisees and people from the religious law condemning what the Lord is doing. Amen? Amen. That's the free package. So if that stuff happens, glorify Jesus. It says, it seemed that this man showed up from every village in all Galilee and Judea, as well as from Jerusalem. And by the way, please pray for us tomorrow. I will depart early in the morning to Jerusalem. And on, on, on Tuesday and Wednesday, we have very important meetings with the government. We have the opportunity to spend personal time with the president, the vice president, and the minister of defense of Israel. So uh, we need your prayers. Suzette Hetting and some other people will join as well. And we go also to the places where Hamas attacked the 7th October. Going to pray, intercede, release God's promises. And we're going to pray and spend time with the families where, uh, where some of them are still in hostage. So really uh, pray for, for this week. And the Lord's healing power was strongly with Jesus. I love that. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a sleeping mat. And they tried to take him inside to Jesus, but they couldn't reach him because of the crowd. So they went up to the roof and took off some tiles. It's a crazy story. Imagine this was your house. <laughs> and they lowered the sick man on his mat down into the crowd right in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, saying with me, their faith. Their faith. Seeing their faith. Jesus said to the man, young man, your sins are forgiven. That's very fascinating. Because of their faith, this young man's sins were forgiven. But the Pharisees and the teachers of religious law said to themselves, who does he think he is? Only God can forgive sins. They were so blind. Jesus knew what they were thinking. Jesus knew and knows what you were thinking this morning. That's awesome for some people and scary for others. <laughs> so we asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? 
it is, is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? So I will prove to you. Remember, he was not, he didn't die yet. His blood was not shed. But Jesus said, I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Jesus has the authority to forgive sins. And then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat and go home. And immediately, as everyone watched, the man jumped up, picked up his mat and went home praising God. Amen. Give the, the Lord a hand for his word. This is powerful. This is great. What I learned directly is that this paralyzed man who couldn't do much, he couldn't go to Starbucks, what you Americans do with a car, but it's very strange for us from Europe. We have a coffee maker. But I see people here in America, they drive to get coffee and pay $5. It's like, wow. Maybe because of the points, I don't know. But like, you know, it's a culture shock I have here. But it's, it's, it's great because this morning, actually, I, I, I did the same. <laughs> Ooh. That, this, this little demon on the Starbucks thing, I don't understand it still, but it's all right. That's, I still don't understand it. But okay, it's, we are in America. So God bless America, 100%. We love, we love America. Amen. We love you. <laughs> but this man couldn't go to Starbucks. He couldn't go to Nation Street. This man was stuck for his whole life on this sleeping mat. Listen to me. Stay with me. This is so important what I'm going to share. And there was just a bunch of people, a community who took care of this paralyzed man. No one is able to run the race alone. You need communities like this. You need friends around you. In situations where you feel paralyzed. Or there's stuff in your life. Where you go through. And praise God that four, these four men, they had faith for this paralyzed man. We don't read this paralyzed man had faith. Because Jesus said to his friends, because of your faith. With other words, because of your faith, you can help someone else for their breakthrough. Amen. You have family members, you know people we don't know. And on the moment you have faith for them, the miracle can happen. The breakthrough can happen. And we call this man, we call him Matt. To confuse you a little bit. Matt was on the mat and my name is Matt. So we have three Matts here. Okay. So you have to pay attention because I'm going to ask you some questions what to do with Matt. So Matt is laying on his mat, and Pastor Matt is teaching you right now about Matt, Matt, Matt. And the four friends heard about that Jesus was in town. Matt, listen, one day, just the morning, listen, Matt, Jesus is in town. And we hear that the healing power of God is up in his life. This is your day. And this is what I learned from this incredible story. Is that what seemed to be insignificant in the world system is significant for Jesus. My Bible says that he cares, 1 Peter 5 verse 7. It says, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Do you know that Jesus cares about you? Amen. That every single detail in your life matters to him? The things that wake you up in the night matters to him? And most of the times what we do as Christians, we just first talk, with our pastor about it, with our spouse, with, with friends around it, was all good. But my Bible says, cast first everything to Him. Amen. And some of you, before you leave this place, you're going to cast. Cast is like a dynamic word. It's an ekbola. It's you cast something. Today, we're going to cast some things. What is bothering you in your life to Jesus. This is powerful. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. The things what makes you sleepy, the things what is not active in your life, could be problems and obstacles for your next steps. They took the, the man, Matt. We don't know how long they walked, but it was uncomfortable. I don't want to walk too long. Here in July, in August, outside, I experienced that. <laughs> Last year, we came here in July, four kids. The baby was one month, 15 suitcases, two beautiful cats. <laughs> but man, it was like, 
it was something here. It was hot. And we arrived in our Airbnb house. The air condition broke. It was 100 degrees inside. We could make eggs on the roof. And I'm like, I am a mission field. I'm in Africa, <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was an adventure. And we, and we loved all of it. They were walking with this man in faith to Jesus. And then suddenly they reached the place where Jesus was. And to their big shock and surprise, there was a huge crowd around that house where Jesus was teaching. And they needed to make a choice. This is what sleeping faith would say. Hey, listen, guys, we tried our best. We tried one time. We prayed. It didn't work out. We heard his voice. We saw Jesus from far. But let's go home. We prayed one time, it didn't work out. Probably it was not from the Lord. We call the prophetic word a false prophet or a false prophecy and we go home. We let the crowd detour God's plan, purpose and dreams over our lives. We let the situations in life detour what God wants to do in your life. The crowd, the mountain, the finances, the fear. Whatever it is in your life. But I'm going to say to you, if you want to walk in God's calling and His will, you will face obstacles. And some of the obstacles are placed by God to test your faith. I personally do believe that without Goliath in David's life, he wouldn't be king. How you view obstacles, how you view mountains in your life matters. Amen. Sleeping faith would say, we tried, we heard something, we saw Jesus from far. And what they were missing was persistent faith. I do believe that the Lord is raising up an army of lovers who are learning to persist in faith because they learn in love to trust Him fully without seeing the outcome. Matt, we have a problem. But we see this obstacle. We see this problem as God's, as God's platform to do a miracle in your life. When you are in a tight spot, you have to realize why are we doing certain things. You have to realize the why. And this friends realize the why is Jesus is there. We know he's the healer. Our friend is paralyzed. So the why is we are going to do something what has never done before. Faith, what is active and not sleeping, brings you to places where you have never been before. Where the most people said you cannot pass. Where the most people say it's not possible. Faith will say there is a way where there seems to be no way. We sing this song all over the world. Let's practice it. Matt. Oof. I'm so happy I was not on, on, that, on that map. Because I don't like flying. I have a little bit height, height problems. We say that even I'm high, tall. I'm not going to roller coasters. I think it's not for people. <laughs> Birds should fly. <laughs> Matt, let's go there. Let's do something what you've never done before. Why? Because they were focusing on Jesus and not on their situation. Come on. They went with this paralyzed man upon the roof. And again for the second time, the third time, they did something they never had done before. Listen, I don't read that they had a blueprint. <laughs> a lot of people, they want to hear the voice of God, but they want to receive a plan from heaven how to do it. And most times my Bible says that's not the case. I want to give you after 25 years of ministry, I just want to give you, I'll throw it away, just some, some, some free things which you can learn. This is what I learned. Faith is trust in Him. Try and figure it out. You can write it down. I can teach the whole day on this subject. Faith is trust in Him. Try and figure it out. When I saw the news about what this years ago, what happened in Myanmar, 
And so, sadly enough, it's happening again. And we will go back. 20 years ago, I was in Jakarta speaking in a leadership conference. And I said, Lord, send me to Myanmar. I want to go there. And Lord said, Matt, I, I, I've equipped you already. Remember what your related uncle and my mentor, brother Andrew, God smuggler, he's now in heaven, said always to me. He said, Matt, the lights, the traffic lights are actually always on green. And the Holy Spirit will stop you when he don't want you to go. Well, we are praying, Lord, when is this green? Well, the Lord says, go. I've already equipped you. You're still with me? And so in faith, we went to Myanmar to, to make a long story short. It was not possible in 70 years. You know, it was like uh, the people were persecuted in the night. You couldn't go together. There was like an, uh, a clock around in the night. You could not gather more than 10 people. And we started to pray and cry out to God with 10 pastors, local pastors. Totally, I think they were like, they, had, they, they represented maybe two, 300 members of the church. That's how small the churches were at that time. And we started to pray and cry out to God. And supernatural, the glory of God came into this room. We were gathered in a blind institute. I never forget it anymore. And in three months, the Lord opened the way. This is 20 years ago. It was impossible. But that's what faith does. Faith moves mountains. You go, you step, you figure out, you pray, you hear, you do, you go. I was scared to realize the power of the spirit of faith. It really moved mountains. We didn't have the resources. We didn't have the network. But we had Jesus. Amen. Three months later. Three months later. We got the permission of that national stadium in Yangon, in Myanmar. And I remember when we were there gathering 10,000 people. No more could fit, security reasons. It was a closed arena. It was live on television. We had ministers of affairs, like the whole cabinet was there. Leaders were there. The Buddhist people were there. The police was there. I felt like scared, stuck, but full of faith. And in the moment I wanted to preach, the Lord said, Mac, get off the platform with Philip Montova. Take the whole choir with you, because I'm going to do something what you have never seen before. Praise God, we were obedient. We went off the platform before we even preached the gospel. And in five minutes, five minutes later, the whole place like, was a literally sound from heaven. A sound from heaven. i never forget it. A sound from heaven when we were as leaders on the floor. Don't know, didn't know what to do and what was going to happen. We just followed his instructions. Get off the platform so I could do something what you have never seen before. That was the instruction. And as an evangelist, it's hard to listen to that instruction because I want to preach the gospel. And I forgot that the Holy Spirit is the best evangelist. <laughs> Working through you. <laughs> but this time, we had so much Buddhist people and monks and stuff. It was very hard even to preach the gospel. People even could go in prison for that. And I kneeled down in the front of the, the platform together with my, my team. Didn't know what to do. And then suddenly it was that sound from heaven. And I looked up. And I saw this glory cloud, a literally glory cloud touching in one second. 10,000 people were on the floor. 10,000 people in one second on the floor crying out to Jesus under the power of the Holy Spirit. I wish I could show to you we have this all on video. This is my God. This is my, this is my Lord. This is your Lord. The vice president and many other people from, from the new government came out of that meeting. Thousands of evangelists and pastors came out of that meeting. It opened the way for massive crusades for more than 15 years. Why do I share that? Faith! It was impossible. It was hard. There were crowds between us and Jesus. But faith figures it out. Faith creates a way where there seems to be no way. Oh, I'm serious about this. Because you guys are territory takers in Orlando, in Sanford, in Tampa, where God has placed you. I wish I had more time.
they did something crazy, took off the tiles. And if I would be there with, uh, so now Matt is standing up and now is Matt is part of the, the team. If I would be with evangelist Daniel Cullen and some of his friends, I would say, hey, hey evangelist Daniel, listen, this, this is so ridiculous what we're doing right now. We have a hole already. Let's just, let's just flip him downstairs. <laughs> I mean, he, 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 he's already paralyzed, you know, so the miracle will be even greater. <laughs> so, because we don't know how they, how they lowered the man. They, they were not prepared to do this, right? Think about it. Probably they took close off, I don't know what they did. Jesus is preaching and suddenly he stops because faith always stops Jesus. He stops. He was teaching, he stops. And he realized something was happening, what was so special and so unique. And he looked at his four guys and the man was lowered, Matt was lowered in front of him. And the first thing he says to this four men, because of your faith guys, all his sins are forgiven. Isn't it beautiful that before Jesus does something from the outside, he first does something on the inside. He's more interested in your eternal life with him than on this time here. Son. Because of their faith, your sins are forgiven because I have the authority. We're not done yet. The best is still yet to come. In his physical body, nothing changed. He went from darkness into the light for eternity. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But in his physical body, nothing changed yet. Listen, up to now, it was all grace. It was all grace. He didn't have faith for this. Friends had faith. He was always depending on other people. It was grace. Listen, if you want to know grace, read this story. It was grace that all his sins were forgiven. He didn't do anything up on this point. But now, now he came to a moment in his life like many of you today, online and here in this room, what can change you forever? Do you believe the doctor's report behind you? Or do you believe in the words of Jesus, by my stripes, you are healed? Yes, yes, yes. The man had to make a decision to roll over to Jesus or roll over to the religious leaders who start to put question marks above him. Are you rolling back to your past, the condemnation, the depression, and the lies of the enemy? Or are you today willing to roll over to Jesus and choose to believe him who says, I will have a hopeful future for you? Church, what is the thing? What is paralyzing you? Because this story is a story what goes over a situation I was in eight years ago. Not physically. But there were situations in my life what paralyzed me. I didn't understand in such a way that it was hard for me to move. Praise God for friends who brought me in the presence of Jesus. Stuff or what, what went behind my control. Things that could destroy and destruct. Paralyzed. Called. Anointed. By him. But on the mat. Paralyzed. What is it what is paralyzing you in your life? You can smile to me and I love you. But the Lord knows your thoughts. He knows what is eating inside of you. Stuff you experienced way years ago, but it's still affecting you. And the Lord said clearly, say to nations, church today, that I am willing to bring them into a new, brand new place of transformation if they are willing to surrender everything to me. Because I care. You have to be honest. You have to be real. 
What is that mat? What baby even became your identity? I love what happened on the moment Jesus said to this man, and now I want you to walk. This man needed to make a faith-filled decision. It was grace who brought him here, but it was a faith-filled decision from this young man. What made him walk? He had to believe in the promise of Jesus. He did something he had never done before, and he started to walk. He started to move. Some of you, you came here limping. Inside limping. You heard the stories about Africa and all the souls. And you're sitting in this church and you're like, but Lord, what about me? Can you use me? Do you really know where I went through, Lord? And the answer is yes. Because he cares about you. It's time to cast everything to the Lord. Because he is here with his physically healing power. But also he wants to heal your heart. Walk. And praise God that Jesus didn't say, leave your mat here. Many altar calls, we say this, leave your mat behind. But Jesus said, no, I want you to take up your mat, to take up your testimony, to take up that what I've done in your life and show the world, show your town, show your village. This is what I have done. And the same thing I've done for you, my friend, I want to do for them. That's the reason McCoby came here with the crutches. That's the reason this other guy in New York said, what the Lord has done for that guy in Africa, he wants to do for you. Take up your mat today. Many of you, you will walk out of this room free from that suicidal thought. Don't play with me. I see you. That's wonderful, eh? When you also can see in the spirit. And not only with your natural eyes. Some of you, you walk away here with your mat. And said, this was my depression. But I rolled over to joy. And hope. And a new future. Take up your mat. Take up your mat. He's going to unlabel you. From things you have labeled yourself. Some of you, you were in a tight spot. A season ago, and you labeled yourself as unworthy. Some of you, you, you heard people say stuff over you, and you start to embrace that lie. My king is here to unlabel you from every label people put over you what is not from God. I'm going to finish with this story if you allow me. One more minute. If I say the word Thomas, the disciples, one of the disciples, most of you will say he was the? How, what? Yeah. Doubting Thomas, right? Do you know that it's a lie from hell? Do you know that we as a body of Christ, so many times we, we use and abuse the Lord? The word, I think theology, yeah, that's the word. <laughs> the word around the situation we don't understand. Thomas was not a doubting Thomas. Thomas was in a situation in his life where he didn't have anything together anymore because his best friend, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one he gave his life to, died. Traumatic experience where he saw Jesus being unrecognizable on the cross. I have to share this with you. Because we're going to share it with Friday soon. Unrecognizable. He walked with Jesus. He lived with Jesus. And something happened in his life he didn't understand. And he went home. Disappointed, damaged. Like they heard people today, you went through things, you gave up everything, you start to walk in faith, and then suddenly this crowd start to appear. The problems start to appear. Maybe you made stupid mistakes because of that tight spot you were in. 
And we know that Thomas was home when Jesus showed up to his other disciples, the 11, and said, Shalom. And he breathed on them. And he said, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And how the Father sent me, that's how I send you. But praise God for friends. They didn't exclude Thomas at all. Said Thomas, they went to Thomas. Jesus was there. And the only thing Thomas said, listen, listen, guys, I saw so many things already the last three, four years. But listen, listen, listen. Unless I see the wounds and they could put my hand in it, then I believe. He was honest. Church, it's time we're getting honest. Not put scriptures over everything and being nice. It's all good when you are dying inside. The Lord is not afraid for you to be honest. It's not affecting your faith if you are honest. So people think that it's from hell. He created emotions. Never be led by emotions, but don't die your emotions because you're afraid that you're not walking in faith. It because of it was of his prayer. He said, "Until I see Jesus' hand and his wounds, I will believe." That Jesus showed up a second time, exactly a second time in the same house. And now Thomas was there. He was not doubting. He was there. He was there. Jesus came back just for Thomas. Thomas, listen. You see my hands? You see my feet? You see my wounds? I left my wounds open. It was after Jesus crucified. I left my wounds open. So now your wounds can be healed. Do you know that his wounds are open still today? So all of your wounds can be healed. It doesn't need to take 15 or 12 years or 5 years or a year directly when Thomas tried. I think he tried because Jesus invited him. This is my wounds. I left it open for you so your wounds can be open. Thomas, I'm real. He received the Holy Spirit and directly Jesus sent out Thomas. Did you know that from all the disciples, what do you mean adopting Thomas? That Thomas went the furthest from all the disciples to the restricted nations. He went all the way to India without a plane, without a car, without a navigation system, without Starbucks. <laughs> he figured it out, risked his life traveled for months when you go now to india south of india oh it's it's every, every everything is there about thomas millions of people got saved because of his life he died in the sword what do you mean doubting thomas he had a little moment in his life and that's what we do in the body of christ even right now over internet and over stupid things that if people have has a little moment in life because they are in a tight spot we label them and maybe you labeled yourself or all the people labeled you and it paralyzing you you disqualified yourself but jesus is here to unlabel you to blow over you with this holy spirit to anoint you to restore you and make you whole let's stand up on our feet if you were here this morning and you don't know Jesus yet, listen, it's all grace. It's not because of your good works. Some family members or friends brought you here today, like in this story. Maybe you even don't believe right now, but your friends believe for you. It's grace that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for all of your sins. He was unrecognizable, his blood flowed. After three days, there was this incredible resurrected power and Jesus is alive and he wants to forgive all of your sin if you're willing to repent and say, Lord, I give my life to you. My life belongs to you. He wants to give you eternal life forever. So I'm going to do three invitations. If that's you in the moment, not, not yet. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, this is your first time, I want you to stand here in this corner. We're we going to pray for you. And Jesus is going to touch you and heal you and deliver you and set you free and give you that wonderful, hopeful future. I want to have in the middle part people who say, Matt, that's me. 
There are things happened in my life what I don't understand. And to be honest, it's delaying, it's eating, it's paralyzing me. If that's you, in a moment, I want you also to come here and stand here in the middle. And we're going to see the resurrected power over you. We're going to see you walk away into a brand new place of transformation. And on that side, I know, I, we, it will be a little bit crowded. Are those people, you are physically in pain. You came here with pain. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is here to heal you today. We have an incredible ministry team. We're going to lay our hands on you. And we're going to see significant healings taking place. Many people will walk away healed, set free and delivered. So if that's you, I want to ask first the ministry team to come right now because of time. And I'm going to count to three. Make your way. If you are in one of the three categories, please come up right now out of your seat. You want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. What is the biggest miracle? What is the greatest thing that can happen today? Please stand here. If you feel like there are things in your life paralyzing you, please come here in this place with a purpose for you to walk in God's promises and calling. And here people give pain in your body and believe that Jesus is able to heal you. I want to have the whole worship team here and we're going to worship Him. We're going to be in His presence. And we thank you, Lord, for everything you're going to do in the coming moments. Active faith says, I won't quit. I don't give up. And I want to leave you with Ephesians 3 verse 16 this morning. I pray that from His glorious unlimited resources, He will empower you right now with inner strength through His Holy Spirit. And I want you just to open up your hands and start to receive the glory the power, the anointing, the presence, the breakthrough you're longing for for so long. Because He is here. He is here. He is here. Church, let's lift up our voice right now. And let's praise the Lord. Because He is here. He is here, the Lord of the harvest. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is here. That's right. I want to ask the ministry team right now to pray, 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 pray. Also, if you're not part of the ministry team, you're a leader, a pastor, an evangelist. Please come help us here right now. And Nations Church, see you next week.
There's such a special stirring of the Spirit of God and of faith that's been released in the room. I know that there's many down here, you're receiving prayers specifically for healing in your body and God's doing a work inside of you. If there's anybody else, you're sitting in your chair right now and you're saying, hey, he didn't call out the specific thing that I need prayer for. I just right now, I want you to just step in. God's, God's doing something here right now. There's a stirring of faith and I just want you to step in and receive from the Lord. Our ministry team is up here. If you want to receive prayer this morning, step out of your seat, come down. We would love to pray with you. Those who are down here, uh, just wait, continue to press into the Lord. I know our ministry team, they're going to be around to you to pray with you. For anybody else that is still here, that is not receiving prayer this morning, just consider this your official dismissal. Please go to Children's Church if you have kids. Pick up your kids. No growth track today, all right? No growth track after service today. And be sure tonight we have a special night service happening at 6.30 at the Ministry Center. So, uh, you know, there's such a stirring here. Come back out tonight to our CFAN Ministry Center. There's gonna be a special revival service happening at 6.30. We encourage you to come back out. Next week, we have Palm Sunday. Don't miss it. We invite you to come back next week. We love you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day in the Lord. Amen.